There must be a crack in the bell. There's gotta be something. I didn't... All right, today we're on the cornet. Well, this is continuation of cornet day. This header gaskets history. But I got these. Some silver goods. For all you guys out there that run headers, you know about these. For guys that don't, these are called the Luma Sills. They're double, well, triple. So they press together. These are the good header gaskets. We'll put those on here so we don't have to deal with this problem again. And then we might be able to hear the exhaust and see how uh, how we did on it. See if it sounds good. Okay, let's. What have we found here? Well, we're pulling the header bolts off here, and there's coolant coming out of it. I don't think it's supposed to do that. I think either the header bolt's too long and punched through a coolant jacket, but we're gonna find out soon. Paul will be so happy. You get to tell him. <laughs> I'll break the news to him subtly here. <laughs> so we're gonna pull this one on this side and see if it's got the same problem going on. Yeah, this one's got it too. Yeah. Unless that's a Chrysler thing. Yeah, Paul's gonna be happy. Maybe you should tell him. Oh, I'll tell him. <laughs> I may get a... Well, maybe I'll get a screwdriver and poke it in the hole. See, I'm not a, I'm not a Chrysler guy. I'm a Chevy guy. That's how we all are here. So we're learning. Chryslers must have an open coolant jacket to these headers. They go clear in, because I can't see two doing the same thing. So. So we'll just pull it off. Probably Paul will be like, oh yeah, they do that. Food's here. Watch you serve. We got a question for you right here. Yeah, since you're a Chrysler guy, let's hear it. So water. When, you pull, when you pull out the front one, the coolant comes out? Oh yeah, water leaks out of those. You gotta put Teflon on them. That's a Mopar so, thing. Mopars are stupid, <laughs> but we love them. Yeah, it stuck good to the header, not where the crap to the block. Fine. Okay, there's that one. I'm sure that'll seal if I just put that other gas yeah. on. Oh yeah. Smoked it, right there. Should have put the good ones in to start with. But they didn't come with the headers like those did. Oh yeah, I never do. You know why? Because they want to change them. Yeah, they want you to, to swear and bleed and get black stuff all over your hands. Well, you notice I rotated sides. Yeah, it was a smooth move. <laughs> you did to me there. I had the easy side picked. Well, I stole it from Randall. Has it always been like this, Paul? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Ben's always been that much smarter to just get the easy side. Oh, I don't side. know if it's smarter or not, but <laughs> it was to make him, you know, toughen it out. He had more patience, I think. Get the light where you can see, and then you can't fit your hand in there. How's this side for fitting? Oh, yeah. Hey, there's, there's so much room in here. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to pick up the back. Maybe. Winning. Oh, yeah, that started. Okay, it's hung. Yeah, you're laying right in it. Oh, I'm right. I got, I got a creeper. Well, I was out of it and then I went right in it. Yep. Is she any better now with the new so, tires? It's yeah. way better. Oh, yeah. Yep. Pretty cool. That last header bolt is tight. I'm telling you Horrible. what, that was fun. Okay. We'll uh, button the bottom up and headers are back on. How excited are you? Excited Pretty excited. Now. We've got a drip right there. Front pump seal. Brand new one. Leaking. So here we go again. Daisy. Really getting tired of this transmission thing. Okay, yeah. now we're about to leak some fluid. Let's see what winter we got here. Wasn't the seal. That was the pump. It's coming around the pump. We'll fix that. There it is. The gasket perfect. I wonder if I cut this the sill on the edge. Did it look cut? No. 
What is it? The gasket looks fine. It's just it's just how we roll around here. Well, we'll clean it up and stuff it back together. Alright. That stripped out. That's why it's leaking. That would explain it. Oh, the weather. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> that one right there is stripped. Oh, yeah. There's no threads in there. And that one was stripped too when I went to torque it. Put oh, that so, hammer sorry, down. That. We don't have any more bell housings. <laughs> we have Paul done already <laughs> ruined the last one. Yeah, Barely one even tapped it. Hardly. Looks like we're making a run. That was my threads in the tranny. Oh, we need a couple. A couple of three Gila coiling devices. Paul ran to get some Gila coils and we're gonna try to get these gauges set up and close so he can put them where he wants them. So we'll have to stick it through that inside and shove it on through. And then we're gonna have to find a hole somewhere up here to stick this coolant piece on. Coming back out. I think we've done stuff on this more than once. You don't know the motto to the <laughs> shop, huh? Uh, I'm learning quick. We do it nice because we do it twice or thrice. Thrice. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps going. Sometimes going. more. Alright, so she's in a fit. Make the fitting. Now it's going to be that one. And now let's make us a hole. Which one should we make? Maybe that'll be big enough for it. Just like that. Okay, I can see it. That should give us enough to get down there now. And that should give us enough to stick all the wiring through it not cut it because the one hose it's over there oh Our oil hose this little white guy hey, you don't want to split that one or you get an oil bath she must work fit. it does it's going in perfect that should just seal in then it'll be just dandy like a pipe tap or something. Yeah. They leave you a lot of room on this thing. Pull that oil cinder out. out. We'll put another one in now. Gonna put that little little adapter for that clear hose right there in it. Hardware store didn't have them, so uh, yeah. Long trip, huh? Now, yeah. Now we're going an hour to go get some helicoils so so paul went to get some helicoils and he told me he has bad luck with everything and i said no nah, he can't be that bad but nobody has any and i didn't believe him but i do now right. <laughs> well getting the last of the oil line hooked up and we can actually see what oil pressure it has it's got to hook up the uh, voltmeter all right, so we figured why we had the transmission out of this thing, we'd get our brakes done. So he's reaching up in there, taking this T fitting off, or four way fitting, and we're putting a three way on it so we can split the front brakes and the rear brakes up, because now it's got discs with a dual master cylinder, so we'll get that all hooked up. I have to go to the auto parts store in the morning, get some Gila coils for this. That'll solve our leak, and we should be back in business. All right, it's morning. We gave up last night because we couldn't get those. Now the master is going to show me how to do this <laughs> without breaking this little thin piece off right here. It's going to get a little sketchy, but we're going to make this work. It's going to happen. We got, I think, three of these holes are stripped, so we'll uh, helicoil them up, and we'll be good. Ben's icrometer. It's, it's calibrated, so let me get an air blower. 
That's drilled out. There's more meat than I expected. I think we're in good shape. Pour some of this stuff in there. I don't know if it helps with aluminum, but hey, I got it. Oh, you got it, you use it. That is the installation tool. Those are the threads we're putting in there. Okay. It's a short tool. I had comments for that, but I, I'm gonna hold back. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta break that inner thing off. Yep. I should we stick a little screwdriver in there and it pops Pop it, it off. Pops it right off. All right. Hey, look, there's threads on this. There you go. Fixed. Check that out. Brandy new threads. Maybe Looks they, good. Maybe it won't so, leak now. We will have the leak fixed shortly. All right, we have all the holes tapped. Things are getting better. We're gonna stuff this front pump back in and torque them to spec. We looked it up, it's 22 foot pounds, the right foot pounds, and we're happy. Threads are in. She's looking good. Just maybe, we're gonna be happy here. We'll put a brake master cylinder back on it and hook the cable or the hoses up to it, the lines, put some tranny fluid in it. I think we can fire it up then and see how bad we are. Need a pipe to wrap it around. Yeah, I gotta go find a pipe. There's a big socket right there in the toolbox. Here's a little trick for you guys. He's banking a curly cue around this to take up some brake line. And it doesn't bend it. We even did the right fitting, I think. Some things do go our way occasionally. Not much, but some things. And I spoke too soon, didn't I? <laughs> we already threaded in once. No pressure, everybody's watching though. Got it. Hey, you gotta make a struggle. Work better under pressure. Cause then it's real life. It's not puking oil out the bottom. Isn't it? How much you added? That's a win. <laughs> and right here it'll work. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Ow! It's every time. Is it bleeding? Oh, it's gonna in a second. I'm gonna hurry and drill this one before it starts. And then we'll get that white powder. Get that powder. <laughs> All the fun stuff for you. Uh, you're not working unless you're bleeding. Oh, I didn't even notice my knuckle. Took some abuse as well. <laughs> you got a leak. <laughs> you got a leak. Get the powder. <laughs> Giving the powder a test. Dog swell. Septic powder. Directions apply a pinch of septic powder to bleeding area using moderate pressure until bleeding stops. Isn't that what you're supposed to do without powder? I think you're supposed to wash your hands first. No. It doesn't take the pain away from the smash, but we'll see if it quits leaking. Now I got a sliver jam. Okay, I'm on the closest to the fender. Dude, that stuff works. Oh yeah, it does. I mean, that's, blood, it's a stop. Yeah, it's not bleeding. Well, she'll definitely use that more. <laughs> <laughs> There must be a crack in the bell. There's gotta be I something. didn't. I didn't see anything though. I didn't either. Like I looked everywhere. Something makes well in there. Get the dynamite. Maybe we'll zip these bolts off and see if maybe the converter leaking. It is the pump housing. Yeah, clear down in there. There's got to be a crack that we're not seeing. Yeah, I wonder if we can just stuff it full of sawdust and. Fired up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fire it up, see how it sounds without an exhaust leak, see if this carburetor runs better. Yeah, let's well, leave the pan under it. Yeah, this is a new carb. New to this machine carb. This is why it doesn't start with the key. All this stuff, we've gotta deal with that. All that mess. Yeah.
front one hasn't so much yet, but the back one is. All right, so we've just been bleeding brakes on this. We didn't video it, kind of boring. Just my brother sitting in there pumping while I'm underneath with the vacuum pump. Sucking vacuum on it and going, but we got good brakes. We're one step closer. If we could figure this stupid transmission situation out. It's got to have a crack. It's got to have something in it. I don't know what it is. Something. We're going to fire it up here again in a minute and see. I wiped it down and it's not leaking now, so I don't know what to think about it. We'll figure something out. Got another exhaust leak starting over here. I'm gonna go through and tighten all the header bolts again. But she's yep. good. Alright, so another day on the Coronet is down. We got a lot accomplished. Some stuff we didn't really get fixed, but we tried. Transmission's still leaking, it's gotta have a crack in it. It's all we can come up with. But brakes are bled up. We put carburetor on it that actually runs good. Yeah, I think the thing would pull in and out of the shop under its own power if we had a shifter in it. We did find out that the interior is wrong. I'll show you what we got going here. These seats, this seat, that is out of a T-Bird. The back gives it away, I'll show you it. Right there, that big dip in the middle, that's a T-Bird seat. I'm currently hunting some interior for this car. So I think I got a couple leads. We're gonna do a little calling and see if we can't find some seats and get some interior in it. But for now, we've done just about everything we can do. We got gauges in it. It runs 85 pounds of oil pressure. It stays at 185 on the temp. So motor's pretty happy. We got some final tuning to do, but she's good. So thanks for watching.